Adventure is fuel for life. From its highs, Little rock and roll, baby. To its lows. And there's a place that captures that spirit. A community of creatives mastering the art of the unexpected. In the biggest little city in the world, Reno Tahoe. The Reno adventure begins with a journey back in time to 1859, Virginia City, a frontier town deep in the Nevada hills. This was the land of silver and gold, where pioneers from far and wide flocked to find their fortune. Seems like Virginia City was actually the hot happening spot. Oh, absolutely it was the hot happening spot because this is where the money is coming from. And resident historian Joe Curtis is willing to go above and beyond for his beloved town. All right, Joe, they gave me an extra dress for you to put on for the next part of the interview. Are you going to do that for us? Absolutely, as long as they're paying enough. <laughs> <laughs> We have to talk about Virginia City and how it really did lead to Reno being what it is today. Well, you got to remember that when Virginia City is formed, it's pretty much a standalone community. So as the Transcontinental Railroad comes through across and comes through Reno, wood, clothing, hardware, alcohol, that alone makes a big important factor to Reno. So Virginia City and Reno have this symbiotic connection, if you will. And as the cities grew, more travelers arrived, including one not in search of fortune, but a name. So my understanding is Samuel Clements became Mark Twain here. Correct. And it had to do with him working for the newspaper, and he begins developing that name for one reason or another. And there's a number of different stories as to just exactly how that came about. He would always buy two drinks at a time and put it on a bar tab and he would say, mark me down for Twain. And using that term, Mark Twain, signs his newspaper articles, Mark Twain. He begins writing his book, Roughing It, as Mark Twain. And as he leaves here, everything after that is Mark Twain. We turn the page to the early 1900s, when most of the country's strict divorce laws brought a new wave of people in search of what's called the Reno Cure. As we move forward and Reno becomes more cosmopolitan, it becomes this divorce capital. Oh, let's talk about that. Yeah, so why is this area known as the divorce capital? Because of our state law saying you can stay in the state for six weeks, and then it gives you citizenship in the state of Nevada. Where there was a law that women could get divorced. Get, you can get a divorce. And they'd start developing what are known as dude ranches for the divorcees to stay while they're getting the divorce process. And this is primarily women, right? Yes. You know, you would go to the bridge in Reno and they throw their rings off into the Truckee River. And then kids would go in there and dig in there and I was gonna the say, rings I would go to the Oh them. yeah. Fast forward to today, and that spirit of empowerment presses on with a new boss in town. Tabitha? There she is. <laughs> I feel <laughs> underdressed. How's it hanging? <laughs> I just came from a meeting. Welcome to Reno. Mayor Hillary Sheevey, champion for the Great Reno Revival and one of Politico's 11 most interesting mayors, has her eye on the future. Now, I only had one hour with the city's highest ranking official, so I got right down to the hard-hitting questions. So when I think of Reno, I think new boots. Yes! Three payments. <laughs> you know what I'm about to say yes. next. Yes. Reno 911, yes. a staple. Yes. Genuine ostrich, three payments. Oh, you know it's so funny, it's a cult classic now. It is. When I meet people, you know, all across the country, they're like, Reno 911, I love that show. So it's really funny when you embrace sometimes you what to. people might think is a negative, it's actually a big positive. So you spent your whole life here, and you've stayed here. Why did you stay? Reno is a community that is so very special. I love that we work hard and we play hard. 
I can go hiking or biking or skiing or down the Truckee River. This is 80% of our drinking water right here in Reno. Hello! Hi guys! Had I known you guys bread. were going to be here, we would have brought bread. It would have been fun. <laughs> I'm not a Democrat or Republican. I am an independent, and so I'm really about people, not party. And it was just a way that I could give back in some special way. And how has the revitalization been? It has really transformed a lot. We were predominantly gaming my whole life growing up here. When I got into office, I wanted to diversify our community. I think it's really important, whether it comes to arts, culture, food, innovation, technology. I wanted to embrace all of that. And we started building relationships with Burning Man, the university. People started to take notice, and then companies started building and investing here. I think I've just been blessed to grow up in a community where we're incredibly close, but we also are resilient. We are the biggest little city. I will tell you that in every possible way. Nestled in the heart of the Sierra Nevada mountains, Reno is just 30 minutes away from some of the best skiing in the world. In 1948, a school teacher brought up six kids in a station wagon and that started the junior ski program. This is Sky Tavern, the oldest nonprofit ski facility in America. But in the heat of the summer, adventurers trade in their skis for wheels. Hell yeah. And let it ride. Everything we do is about getting kids outside. We are the anti video game group. Oh, you got it. Keep those feet on the pedals. Nice. That's the best of all when the kids come up. They're so fearless, they want to learn, and the thing is, they're learning so much. They're learning confidence, they're learning skills. Every time I come up here and I watch the kid program, it's just so cool. Oh, passing them on the trail, and they're oh, like, they're... we're sending it! I'm yeah. like, yes, you are! I found it to be really cool is learning that this was actually free. So we're in a fortunate position here. Our mountain is on City of Reno land that they lease to us long term. So in that long term lease, we're able to build out our programs, especially focusing on women and youth, so people can come up and try mountain biking for the first time. A little rock and roll, baby! Whee! And you come and you're like, this is amazing, I've had a great time. And if that happens, we've done our job. This place is like a trove of outdoor activity, right? Like mountain biking, skiing, hiking, and giving Reno families a place to come and do cool stuff. It only enriches your community. I still think that the world needs places like us because we measure everything we do in smiles, not in dollars. There's so many more trails we can build. The community's behind it. Sky is the limit. Sky is the limit. And just over the mountain, you'll find the crystal blue waters of Lake Tahoe, the gem of the Sierras. And while most visitors come here to take in some summer fun, there's a small group of dedicated divers who are here to give back. We're ready to go diving today and clean up some trash and beautify this beauty. As a dive master myself, I couldn't help but gear up and join the cause. There's two types of divers in the world. Those who pee in their wetsuit and those who lie about it. Clean Up the Lake is a nonprofit environmental dive center, which recently cleaned up the 72 miles of Tahoe's shoreline, yielding over 25,000 pounds of submerged trash. But a lot of people don't associate Lake Tahoe with scuba diving. <laughs> but when you have a purpose, it kind of adds this new and exciting element to diving. As someone who's been below the surface all over the world, this dive was like no other. It was just such a bummer that there was so much trash around every corner. Are these some of the things that you've also found yes. like on dives? This Scuba one is the most interesting to me. Was it a bad conversation that ended up in the lake? I like the imagination going into yeah. this. And what happens with the trash you pull out? We do a litter categorization after every single dive. These will be found within the metal category. 
Our data management coordinator uses a method developed by the United Nations Environmental Program, which separates it by material type and use type. There's 83 different categories. To me, this was our money load find today. <laughs> that one was fun. As, it doesn't look like much, but for us, I mean, it took us forever to pull it out. What goes into a landfill, we found these artists that kind of specialize in this. And so they took that trash and turned it into a bald eagle catching a lot and cutthroat trout. And it's gonna go in front of the Tahoe Blue Event Center in South Lake. We found like five different pairs of sunglasses. A little freshies, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you just put those on after it being in this bag. You know, after working here for two years, you become one with the trash. Right? Use. There's something to be said about good karma and that we found this silver bracelet. I want to say good things come to those who wait, but I guess it's good things come to those who clean up the lake. Boom, baby! And while it's great to pull the trash out, what really keeps me coming back is like the community of people that we get to meet and interact with and our volunteers keeps us going. It's a feeling I can't explain, in all honesty. It just feels good at the end of the day to get to go home be so tired, but you're tired for a good reason. You put it down, we take it out. <laughs> We're working on our catchphrase, yeah, okay? We'll figure it We're out gonna figure it out. <laughs>
maybe power tools for the first time, even just a hand drill or orbital sander. It really invites anyone who has something that they want to say or something they want to create to just do it. The experience of working with a group of people from start to finish on a huge piece of art can be just radically life-changing. Though the flames of creativity motivate these artists through endless hours of work, their final pieces are often meant to be set ablaze, a tribute to Burning Man's principle of immediacy, to live in the moment before it's lost forever. The name of the project itself, My Body. My Body, My Home. It's kind of based around this vision of a ghost coyote sleeping in the remains of her bones. There have been times in my life when I was very, very sick where I felt prisoned inside of my body. As I've recovered over the past five years, I'm trying to come more to be like, this corporeal form is the house that I live in. For me, it's like a yin and yang thing. I lived the first half of my life in the military. The second half been about creating things and fixing things. Yeah, and I wonderful. feel like that's the redemption of that and what helps me deal with post-traumatic stress disorder. She'll have this box in the center of her for people to leave traumas and when we burn her and we burn the notebooks, she's going to take all of that trauma with her to the next world. Very fortunate to have Reno be the gateway into Burning Man. We also really encourage visitors to come during that time because it really blows them away when they go out there and have this experience that they never have probably ever imagined. And the love and the release will make me go back every year I can for the rest of my life. They say about an elephant, the best way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. One bite at a time, one rack at one a time. One rack at a time. Okay, let's do it, let's okay. go. In Reno, every spin and every roll is a dance with Lady Luck. And while some visitors test their odds at its many iconic casinos, yes! others embark on a treasure hunt to uncover another kind of jackpot. Let's see it. Howdy, ma'am. Oh, perfect. My it's, name is Tabitha. You look like Reno, Nevada. Before I came to Reno and I told a friend, oh, I'm going out to Reno, they said, number one place I had to stop was Junkie. And I was like, well, what's Junkie? And they're like, you'll see. <laughs> I'm blown away with how, how do you get this much inventory? I am constantly usually in overalls and I'm junking and I have a van. <laughs> you have a van. Right in the heart of Reno's bustling Midtown District, Junkie's 15,000 square feet of secondhand apparel, antiques, and furniture is almost guaranteed to have something for everyone. Do I look like I know what you I'm know, doing? You look like you know what you're doing. First time in my life. <laughs> <laughs> How have you seen Midtown change? Midtown started in 2008 during the recession, and all of us small business owners just bind together and got through it. And we went through COVID, but you come back stronger, and now I can't even keep up with all the new businesses that are opening in Reno. Another Midtown staple is Parapol Dameron Focal's Rice Box Kitchen, ranked on Yelp's top 100 places to eat in the United States, and his next rising star, Noodle Box Kitchen. So we're gonna make boat noodles today. In Thailand, there's a lot of canals, and back in the days, it was sold on a boat. Boat Small. would pull up yeah, and sell you the exactly. Noodles. I feel like a witch, doing a witch's brew. Is it done yet? <laughs> With its Asian-inspired comfort food, Noodle Box allows customers to embrace the three-word motto painted on the wall. Eat. This is fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Drink. Cheers to that, mm -hmm. yeah. And of course. We sat down to gossip. Yes. I learned, a drink. fun fact, <laughs> you're turning 50 this oh year. Oh my gosh, 50 Stop. years young. What is your secret? You know, just enjoy life. Yeah. I think that's what keeps you young. If you asked me maybe like four years ago, how's my life? And I would tell you it's like kind of crappy. 
Why? It's, you know, COVID happened and I was not in a really good place. You'll go greater places than where you are today. You know, my best friend and his husband was quarantining here and they're like, Paul, just come visit us in Reno. And I was like, I don't want to go to Reno. But I came and then it was, it was like peace. And Reno is home now. We'll help guide your way back home. What would you say is your favorite thing about Reno? The people, definitely. People are real. They're not fancy or, you know, snooty. You could meet a millionaire at the steakhouse and you wouldn't even know he had a dollar. A lot of people just don't realize Reno is actually a very accepting city. You know, be whoever you want to be and enjoy life. Parapal, I've had a fantastic week. I've gotten to climb to the tallest artificial rock wall. I've gotten to go mm -hmm. mountain biking, mm -hmm. scuba diving. Yeah. I've gotten to try on incredible clothes and I've gotten to have some of the best damn noodles I've ever had <laughs> in my entire life. This tops it off as just being one of the sweetest trips I've ever taken. Ooh, unpretentious that's... food, unpretentious people. Aww. Cheers yeah. to that. Right? All it takes is a touch and I am free.